All right, this is Ubiquitron. I'm playing Kerbal Space Program, and today we're going to take a break from bombing our test target, and we're going to build a space telescope. Now, Kerbal Space Program doesn't exactly have, like, scientific optics or anything. Uh, if you go to the Science tab, you get, at best, you get some survey scanners for ores and stuff like that. Um, so we're going to use these and call it a, an optical slash... Uh, visible light telescope uh, so what we're going to need is not that something a little bit bigger than that yeah so let's get rid of that there we go so this is gonna be our telescope part and uh, basically we're gonna kind of design it off of the uh, James Webb Space Telescope, which is, well, that's still not very big. This one. Oh, yeah, there we go. Nice big robot brain for spacing. All right. So let's go back here. It's going to need a power source. Done. And we're going to need uh, fold out heat shields. Is that medium, small, large? Let's do the large. Oh, wow. So yeah, I like this. This is, this is, let's do this. Except I want three. Let's see what this looks like. I like where that is. All right, uh, what else are we going to need? Uh, we're going to put a service bay on there just because it looks cool. And we can, I guess we can put inside here, we can do uh, the Communitron. No, I'm, I'm going to need that, but I'm not going to need it. Don't need Mystery Goo, the surface scanning module. That's not going to work in space. Uh, the pressure, no... Communitron, comms. There's not a really a whole lot of... So let's just get rid of that service bay. I guess that's kind of a waste. Uh, we are going to need some RCS fuel for station keeping. And on that note as well, what have I done? We're going to four-way that. There we go. And to, I think we're definitely going to need a, a torque wheel for station keeping as well. I don't think we'll need lights, but I'm gonna put lights on it anyway. Just in case we decide to dock with it or something. And actually we'll need to put a docking node on the side. I'm just going to put that right here, kind of innocuously. And then the survey scanner, like that. So this is going to be useless in the orbit that I'm going to put it in, but that's fine. Is there anything else I can put on here? I, I mean, I guess we could put a heat shield, but that's kind of pointless no rocket engines so let's do no I want to do this that 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 there we go looking good and we can still move these down just a bit All right, so there is the basis of our our telescope, our sweet space telescope. What we're going to call this, since we're basing this off of the James Webb Space Telescope, we're going to call it the Jeb Kerman Space Telescope. All right, and so let's see, 
Uh, at this point, we're going to need a Separatron. And we're going to need some smaller fuel. There we go. I Do these on... Let's see here. So I want to see if these... Yeah, they extend. Oh, yes. Whoa. I'm liking it. That's good enough. Are you making a solar sail next? Uh, no. So let's go back to the vehicle assembly building. So one thing I did forget was solar panels. So on top of our sweet uh, radiators, we're going to put some solar panels. This is going to be one obnoxious looking craft. But, I mean, it kind of... So the James, this needs to be attached actually to the... There we go. That's good enough. That's the as low as we can get it. So the James Webb Space Telescope is scheduled to launch in 2018 uh, aboard an Ariana 5 rocket. Uh, it's going to kind of get put into L2 orbit. That's a Lagrange point 2. That's the Lagrange point that's behind the moon. Um, Kerbal Space Program obviously does not have Lagrange points yet. So we're just going to kind of put it on a really far orbit that's outside Mun orbit. So probably in between Minmus and Mun. Uh, let's see, what else? It's uh, it, the, the James Webb carries a 6.5 meter mirror array. Uh, it's too big for the Ariana uh, 5 rocket, which is 5.4 meters which is, I believe, uh, one of these. No, where's the... It doesn't say how wide these are. But I, it's, it's roughly about this size. Uh, so, yeah, inst so instead of... Getting a bigger rocket, the uh, James Webb Space Telescope kind of folds apart in three pieces. Then it, at, and it's got like a 30-day deployment cycle, like as it as it uh, puts out these uh, sun shields, and basically, so the the telescope itself I mean, is something roughly about this big, but it has this giant sun shield that forms this big like mylar diamond. And what that does is kind of block the sunlight and the heat from washing over it. It has to operate uh, at about 50 Kelvin, which is negative 220 Celsius and about three, negative 370 Fahrenheit. And uh, so, it, yeah, it it, um, it deploys these sun shields and it deploys all these pieces of the, the telescope and unfolds and everything over the course of like a month as it's uh, slowly building out its orbit. And um, I can't do that. <laughs> so we need our second stage, which I think that will do. And finally, I'm going to cheat a bit just to make sure that we get off the ground properly. And I'm going to use the big boy rockets with a mainsail. Oh yeah. And then where's my these things? So an Ariana 5 has two uh, two SRBs which I think we can probably cheat and use these. Or I guess it's not really cheating though. That well, so using that's a bit cheaty. So let's put this on there about that high. About like that with these fancy nose cones like so is that centered that's not really centered so we need to 
get that part fixed. Kind of like that. That still doesn't look right. Dang it. And so yeah, it's um it's a 6.5 meter array and it unfolds over the course of like a month at Lagrange 2. So it's this really interesting process. There's a video out there on YouTube that goes over the whole ordeal. There's that. And now we're going to mirror that on this side. No, I don't want to do that. I want to pick this up double and do that. Perfect. All right, so there's my there's my basic design. I'm I do need to put a cowling over all of this and uh I'm going to do some basic st uh, cleanup and we'll be right back. Okay, so here we are. I've done my cleanup. I've strutted things up because it don't mean but if it ain't got that strut. Um, put a cowling on there. We're ready to go. So pretty much all we have to do, I think I staged everything correctly. So all we got to do is launch now. Um... So we're going to start our gravity turn already. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> All right, then. That was six billion dollars down the drain. All right, so let's try this again. Maybe we won't gravity turn so much in the beginning. I think that may be what happened, is our payload flopped around a bit. As it is wont to do. We uh, initiated some sort of oscillation by tapping it. I don't know. We're going to ease into our gravity turn. That's looking good so far. Nothing has exploded. We're about to lose our SRBs. There we go. All right. A little bit of fireworks. That's that's understandable. They even survived a bit, it seems. I probably should have put some parachutes, saved a bit of money. So we're going to keep easing into our gravity turn. We're only 9,000 meters up. Uh, 300 meters a second. And we're going to keep going. So the James Webb Space Telescope carry will be carrying four uh, infrared imagers with it. Uh, the near IR cam, the near cam, the near IR spectrograph or spectrometer, the near spec, the mid IR instrument, the MIRI, and the fine guidance sensor slash near infrared imager and slitless spectrograph, which uh, it's actually two pieces of equipment, but they kind of package together as one. The fine guidance system sensor. Uh, it actually keeps the telescope pointing in the right direction. And the near-infrared imager and slitless spectrograph is just another uh, infrared imager. So it uses all four of these uh, infrared things to study various bandwidths of the infrared spectrum. Uh, it has no visible light uh, imagers no ultraviolet or anything else it's mostly it's all just infrared and it's just four different oh four different pieces to look at four different parts of the infrared spectrum so now we're just going to burn i'm gonna get this pointed kind of towards the horizon I think we're high enough that I'm just going to go ahead and deploy that. And 
extend my solar panels so I don't run out of energy, which is something I forget to do. I guess I don't really need this one down there, it's not doing anything. <clears throat> So we're going to keep boosting. We could probably deploy these as well, but that might be a bit much at this moment. And at the rate we're going, we shouldn't... Let me keep... Let me just point the nose straight at the horizon. Or actually, let's just keep pointing up and see what happens. We want to get kind of right in between... Uh, the Mun and Minmus, uh, roughly a 30,000 kilometer. How high is that? That's 11,000 kilometers. So yeah, 30,000 kilometer orbit. If that's even possible. It's not looking like it's going to happen. We've introduced a little bit of a spin. I wonder if that's because of we're spinning this way. I wonder if that's because of our knocking clamp, <clears throat> which is uh, unsettlingly blocked by this solar panel. We might have to knock that off somehow and just rely on the other two. So we're about halfway through this fuel tank. Yeah, we're gaining some pretty good altitude. Uh, ideally, I would build a smaller orbit and then each pass on the uh, periapsis I would boost and slowly build out our apoapsis somewhere out in the middle of nowhere. We're just going to do a straight burn because that's how I roll and uh, hope for the best. And we're Yeah, we're a little less than half a little less than half our fuel and Still not making very good progress, but still some progress. So let's point straight at our prograde vector and get as much uh, as much uh, speed as we can. We should be able to build out a periapsis here soon. But we'll see what happens. And I can't, of course I can't, can't time warp while I'm accelerating, so that part sucks. I guess I could pause the video, but just in case something crazy happens, like, I don't know, we flop out of our cowling and blow up, that's always a thing. So yeah, that's the uh, the James Webb Space Telescope. It almost got canceled because the uh, US decided to drop their budget in 2011, but that got, part got fixed. Uh, they got a reduced budget, and they, as far as I can tell from anything I've read, is that they're still on track to launch in 2018. They were initially, or they had, oh gosh, all right. There we go. Oh, take that. They were, had set up, oh, I have a periapsis now. It's only 3,000 meters. They had set up to launch late this year, 2015, but due to budgetary restraints, that obviously didn't happen. So we're just cooking along. We're at 7,000 meters, 8,000 meters, and continuing onward. So 11,000 meters versus 46. So that's roughly 35 in all, I think. Oh, here we go. We're cooking now. Let's settle about 30,000 meters. 5, 6, no, 27. 28. That looks good. 28.3. So from there, we're going to add a maneuver. Give ourselves a periapsis of, there we go. That looks good. 29.5 and 28.4. So let's curb that just a tad. 29.2. Just a bit more, so 28.2, 29.1, and 28.1. That looks pretty good. So from there, let's uh, 
warp to next minute if I can click on the button. What is going on with this? There we go. Well, I think that junk made it back. So this is a one minute, three second burn. Uh, so we need to start burning at uh, roughly 32 seconds. So I'm going to position, get ready to burn. There's the, the, cur the earth, Kerbin, the Mun, and somewhere out in this blackness is Minmus. And let's do this. One minute. We should have enough fuel to make this burn. So let's watch. Watch this orbit get built. So there's Minmus. Minmus is kind of that way. What's that way out there? The Elu Probotron, which was an utter failure. Minmus, right there. And we're just burning away. Um, We're about halfway there now. Oh, we have a Mun encounter. That would have launched us out of the Kerbin system. And, oh, still going. We're, we're good on fuel. I think I'm going to keep... So this part is detachable, but I think I'm going to keep it for some station keeping, just in case. Oh, here we go, here we go. There we go. So let's uh, turn on our RCS and kind of maneuver this back. Two, one, zero. Perfect. So where are we at here? We have 28.6, 28.1. Oh, that's perfect. Like 28, so that's 100. Oh, so we're actually at yeah, 28,000 kilometers. We're 100 and five, 500 kilometers eccentric orbit. But that's good enough for me. I, I, can, I can sit with these numbers. So let's deploy these crazy solar shields, radiators, and deploy the scanner and point this thing back. Everything's going to mesh together and look stupid. So we want to, there we go, right there. So everything's gonna fold out real fast. Let's turn some lights on, just because we can. Can we perform an orbital survey? No. <laughs> Definitely not, uh, not close enough for that business. So there we go. There is our uh, Jebediah Kerman Space telescope. Ready for some space telescoping. Let's get this pointed like that. Looking good. And now we can observe the Kerbal universe. Before time itself, or something like that. Or at least in the infrared spectrum. So yeah, this is uh, Ubiquitron. Playing some Kerbal Space Program. Look up the James Webb Space Telescope learn about it it's very interesting and hopeful it is the hubble space telescope replacement the formal replacement so i'm excited to see what they come out with in the next uh five or six years after it's launched but until then we'll see you in the future